so in last lecture we introduced a new seismic hazard parameter uh, which is called spectral acceleration sa and it is the response acceleration of a single degree of freedom system when subjected to a particular earthquake right so related concept is the response spectrum concept and the response spectrum is defined as a graph or a curve between the peak response of single degree of freedom system and its time period right and it can be plotted for any given earthquake time history for any given past earthquake so if we are given with ug dot dot function of time we can convert it to another form which is called the response spectrum or specifically for example acceleration response spectrum right and how we can convert it that we assume a single degree of freedom system with a certain time period and we apply that earthquake to that single degree of freedom system and extract the peak response acceleration of that mass right because that mass will have u of t it will have u dot of t and it will have u double dot of t the time stepping method or doha mills integral or any other method can be used to solve that single degree of freedom system and extract the response the peak value of acceleration response is called spectral acceleration and we can plot that spectral acceleration uh, on y axis as a function of the time period of the of the building or time period of the structure right so we change the time period again and again run the same earthquake pick the peak response again and we keep on doing it for maybe many time periods and finally we get a curve like this right this curve is called response spectrum or in this case acceleration response spectrum there can be a displacement response spectrum there can be a velocity response spectrum we also discussed some of the properties of uh, this curve right how it can be interpreted what information it can give us if it is given for a past earthquake right but obviously we have to design our structure for future earthquake for which the time history is not available right so the procedure is that we perform seismic hazard assessment and as and as a result of that process we estimate the peak ground acceleration or any other hazard parameter for future earthquake right so there was a time when pga was a useful hazard parameter ground motion parameter so seismic hazard assessment was performed for for estimating the future pg uh, pga values right future pga values so we not we do not know the exact time history of future earthquake but we estimate its peak number right pga future pga and then we use that future pga number the output of this process in the seismic design of our new buildings right uh, another way of seeing the whole thing is that now uh, we can have the more sophisticated or more you can say better seismic hazard parameter which is not the starting point of this response spectrum curve which was pga but some other point on the same figure same curve right so the new generation of building codes define a new seismic hazard parameter other than pga we now know that this curve starts from pga value right so pga is actually the starting point of response spectrum a very stiff structure which has almost zero time period will have the same response acceleration as the ground acceleration right so response acceleration or spectral acceleration will be almost equal to pga at the start point of the curve right but now we shift from pga to another important hazard parameter and that is spectral acceleration value not at the starting point but at a time period of 0.2 second and at a time period of 1 second 
this y axis quantity can be used as a ground motion parameter in replacement of pga right but obviously when you use y axis quantity or sa you have to fix a time period because it is a function of time period of the building pga is not the function of time period of the building it is the actual shaking of the ground itself right so when we use sa as the hazard parameter to define the level of future hazard then we have to fix the time period also so two time periods are fixed for this purpose spectral acceleration corresponding to 0.2 second is called ss so the value of spectral acceleration sa at 0.2 second is denoted as ss and sa value at 1 second is denoted as s1 so these two numbers now this pair actually defines the seismic hazard level of your site and and not the pga number right so for future earthquake building codes provide us a smooth spectrum equation right so they give us an equation of a spectrum which which we can plot for our site uh, if we know the ss and s1 value for our site and if we plot that for a particular site we get a very smooth kind of a spectrum like this right and they recommend this spectrum as the design spectrum building codes actually recommend right it is the same spectral acceleration versus time but it is now plotted using an equation it is not plotted from an existing past recorded earthquake just like this one it is recorded uh, using an equation from code so let me write it code equation right and in that code equation the hazard parameters are used as an input previously the pga was being used now ss and s1 pair is being used right uh, or any other quantity which is function of uh, these hazard parameters right so previously if you remember ubc 97 there was a ca and cv coefficient that coefficient was the function of pga value or function of zone in which your building is right and zone is a function of pga right zone is made based on the pga ranges nowadays explicitly you use ss and s1 in that equation improved equation to construct that spectrum for your site right so the summary is that we cannot have the whole history of future earthquake but we have we can have the spectrum of future earthquake and that spectrum is a smooth spectrum right it is a hypothetical earthquake which will hit your structure it is a design level earthquake which uh, for which you have to design your building right in future so obviously no real earthquake will have a smooth spectrum like this the real earthquake will always be shaky jaggy right but still uh, this smooth spectrum is a conservative estimate of the future ground shaking so now if you want to perform the equivalent lateral force procedure for your structure you directly use this pair for your site which is coming from the seismic hazard assessment results if you want to perform the response spectrum analysis right you have two options one of them is that this se seismic hazard assessment can also provide you the site specific spectrum right it, one of the outputs for this seismic hazard assessment is not only ss and s1 but it can give you the spectral acceleration at any time period not only at 0.2 second and 1 second for future earthquake so seismic hazard assessment can give you the complete spectrum of your site uh, for one particular site you can get that site specific spectrum so if you can afford the seismic hazard assessment for your project site this is the accurate option and that spectrum which you get as an output from seismic hazard assessment you can use it for response spectrum analysis right the second option for that response spectrum analysis is that that you use this code equation you get the ss and s1 for your site put that in the code equation code equation actually what it is doing it is actually interpolating between these two 
points right and extrapolating so you are already providing the code this number which is ss corresponding to 0.2 second and you are already providing uh, the s1 value which is this number s1 corresponding to 1 second and it is filling in all the points in between and making it a complete response spectrum curve right so this is the second option which you can have if you are if you want to perform the 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 response spectrum analysis that either you go for the site specific spectrum of the future earthquake coming from the seismic hazard assessment and second is that you directly use code equation and put the seismic hazard parameters of your site and construct the spec spectrum for your site so now the summary is that we have the spectrum for our future earthquake either coming from psha or coming from code equation right but obviously the code equation will require ss and s1 which will come from psha at least right so we have the future earthquakes spectrum so if we want to perform the dynamic time history analysis we have to select past ground shaking and we have to modify them there are different methods for that we have to modify them such that their spectra start matching with this spectrum of your site right so it may be possible that you plot the spectra for your site which comes out to be let's say this one spectral acceleration versus time period and you pick a ground motion from the ground motion database and you plot its own spectrum actual spectrum using this process single degree running again and again you plot that spectrum and it comes out to be let's say this one like this obviously it will be irregular so now it means that uh, the ground shaking which you downloaded from the ground motion database is far lower than the seismic hazard level expected at your site so currently it is not representing the future earthquake of your site right so it will be amplified obviously you will multiply that whole time history with a factor and you amplify it and it may look like this once you are sure that now the hazard level posed by that particular ground shaking modified ground shaking is matching with the hazard level of my site and that will that actually will be stated by this comparison that you will plot the modified earthquakes response spectrum over the target spectrum or design spectrum if they match well then that ground shaking is now ready or can be regarded as a representative ground shaking which can occur at your site in future right so you do this process iteratively for maybe 7 or 11 ground shaking and once you have good matching then those modified ground shakings are ready to be used in the dynamic analysis of the building right so the summary is that this smooth response spectrum design response spectrum com coming from either the building code or coming from the psha results uh, that spectrum is the spectrum for future ground earth ground shaking that should be used in any seismic analysis procedure for the new buildings right and also for the evaluation of existing buildings if you want to use the the seismic analysis procedure for that purpose right so a concept uh, which started actually from the past earthquake how we actually can construct the response spectrum of a given earthquake by running single degree of freedom system again and again we just uh, use the same concept for future earthquake right okay first question is that uh, uh, are this design spectrum they are different for different hazard level actually when i say design spectrum i am obviously i am talking about db level already right the response spectrum for future earthquake which is mc level will be different right so actually these ss and s1 values are by definition defined at mc level and then code prescribe a constant factor of 2 by 3 to reduce them to approximately db level right so which means that uh, 
the equation which the code will be prescribing already incorporate DBE level values, right? So, it is the DBE level by definition because the intention of making this smooth spectrum from the code equation is the design of new buildings. So, they are by definition DBE level, but if you want to plot for SLE level, you can use the same equation, but the SS and S1 number which you will put will be MCE level. So, with the, the, that will be higher than that. Uh, sorry, MC level will be higher and service level will be lower than that, right. So, the equation will give different hazard figure or different curve depending upon the hazard level which you are talking about, right. And the second question was about the, the selection of ground shaking uh, for dynamic analysis. Uh, you have this spectrum already with you and this defines the hazard level for which you want to perform the dynamic analysis. If you want to perform the dynamic analysis for MCE level, then this curve should be MCE curve, right? Uh, and the ground motions should be matched to this MCE curve. For design analysis, if you want to use dynamic analysis for design purpose, then this curve should be DBE curve and the ground motions should be matched to DBE curve, right? similarly for SLE. So, the process goes like this that first you understand the seismicity of your area. What kind of ground shaking can occur at your site? What is the type of fault which is governing the seismicity at your site, right? Which has the maximum contribution in the SS and S1 values at your site, right? So, that for type of fault that faulting mechanism can be used as a selection criteria. Then what can be the maximum magnitude which this fault can produce? What is the source to site distance? What is the VS 30 value or what is the site class for example, uh, site on which your site is located. Similarly, some other features like whether you are expecting a pulse like ground motion or not normal ground motion. All this is called selection criteria and that obviously will uh, be coming from your analysis or your information about the seismicity of that area. So, you first finalize the selection criteria. So, so that you end up in exactly getting those ground motions from the database, which are really expected at your site, right? Those kinds of ground motion. So, then you input that selection criteria and the database will give you hundreds of ground motions, which will match that criteria, right? And then you can start looking at their actual hazard level or actual spectral acceleration values, right? So, there are two methods to modify them. One method is just to apply a constant factor uh, more than one if you want to increase it or less than one if you want to reduce it, because it may be possible that a real earthquake is recorded and when you plot its own spectrum, it is more already more than the the hazard level of your site, right? So, in that case you have to reduce it. So, one option is that you apply a constant multiplier. You do not modify their frequency content, right? So, you just amplify or deamplify it. The whole spectra will go up or down simultaneously. So, in that case you will not be getting an exact matching. In some part of the spectra, the the curve will be matching, other part it will not be matching. So, you will find some optimum solution, right? So, this is called uh, scaling, spectral scaling, right? There is another technique called spectral matching and that is based on the idea that if, if this is your smooth design spectrum or MCE spectrum or SLE spectrum uh, from which you want to exactly match or uh, you can select the ground motions based on that. So, in that case that spectral matching algorithm will up, will add different wavelets or take out different wavelets from that original time history. And every, every time it does that, it makes its spectrum and it matches and sees that whether it is going close to the target or not, right. So, it iteratively keeps on doing that from a different because let us say this is your whole time history like 50 second. It will take out one 
specific wavelet from first few seconds or add one wavelet in first few seconds and then plot the spectrum again plot the spectrum of that modified time history again overlay it on this same graph and check whether it is going close or not so it keeps on doing it so actually it is modifying the frequency content of your ground shaking and it keeps on doing it until you get a very perfect kind of a matching so it will be like this that this is your smooth spectrum and the modified ground shaking after this spectral matching may look like this exactly like this line over line right so that algorithm is available different commercial programs also use that one it has its own history but the main idea is that you modify the frequency content you modify you do not just scale up or scale down you just almost change the whole frequency content you change the nature of ground shaking right how it is going to excite your structure you completely change that so therefore there are two different groups in this whole area one group of researchers says that we should stick to the spectral scaling because in that the frequency content is preserved the actual geological phenomena which cause that ground shaking its signature is already there in that signal so please do not disturb that signal right uh, you just scale up or scale down so keep that natural variability in it so that it can excite your structure as the way it want right so it will be more realistic but another group of researchers says that we can modify the frequency content to exactly match with with our target spectrum right so these are the two parallel approaches for the selection and modification of ground shaking if the time allows i'll show you some demonstration how to actually do it right but it is very easy several videos are available how to perform spectral matching how to perform spectral scaling right actually you will perform spectral matching of the you will modify the time history itself right so you are not modifying the spectrum you are modifying the time history and plotting its spectrum again and again and checking whether it is matching or not so at the end of spectral matching you will get a modified time history which you can then import in etabs or perform 3d and directly make a load case for dynamic analysis so now that earthquake represents a real mc level earthquake or db level or sle level depending upon with what spectrum it is matched right actually the seismic hazard assessment can be performed for a whole study region and it can also be performed for one point one particular site right so for obviously when you do it for one particular site you will be doing it more accurately your resolution will be you, you know higher for whole study area uh, obviously when you want to make a map ss map or s1 map or pga map then you do it for whole study area not for one point you do it for all points right and for that you have to decide a resolution or grid right what 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 will be the size of your point right so generally the psha if it is done for whole country for example it is done for 0.1 degree by 0.1 degree this is the typical resolution mostly used right it is if you convert it into kilometers it is just 11 kilometer by 11 or 10 point something by 10 point this is lat long degrees right so uh, almost 11 km by 11 km so with this resolution if you perform psha uh, for every 11 by 11 square uh, you get one number for ss one number for s1 and that too for one particular hazard level for example mc level right by definition the uh, although you can perform the psha for any hazard level actually when you perform that it gives you for all hazard levels it gives you a whole database of results right and you can just pick the 
M C level or D B level, but any intermediate level also you can pick, right? For like any other level in between. So let's just fix to M C level. So you will get one M C level number for S S and S one for every eleven by eleven kilometer, right? And if you reduce this to zero point zero five degree by zero point zero five degree, I have seen P S H S studies at this resolution. If you if your focus is only one city, for example. then you can go for 0.05 right so uh, let me give you an idea that um, uh, when you do this 0.1 degree by 0.1 degree uh, resolution pshe for whole of pakistan you will get around uh, more than 10000 points right so actually you get the ss value on more than 10 or 12000 points in the administrative boundary of the country right so then it's your decision whether you uh, normalize them for bigger areas or for each city you want to give one number then you can give the maximum of that whole city right so in the new building code of pakistan what we did is that we selected only districts right and just proposed one number for each district right or whatever is the administrative unit here uh, so around 300 or 350 points we actually give out of those 10000 but uh, i plan to make a web app in which i actually will show the detailed pshe results so for every you can say few kilometers you will have a different number right that is more accurate way of or a bit more site specific way of doing or disseminating the results right so we can perform the hazard assessment not only for pga but for any spectral acceleration right so this hazard assessment will give us not only how the earth will shake in future but it can also give us an estimate how a particular time period single degree of freedom system will shake in future right so if when we set ss or spectral acceleration as the hazard parameter we are directly jumping from ground shaking to structural response right we are directly forecasting the structural response in future right but not for all structures generally for two time periods right 0.2 second and 1 second but if you perform the detailed pshe generally the commercially available and most of the open source pshe engines also give you the hazard parameter or spectral acceleration at any time period you want right this is very important to understand right at this stage that ss is spectral acceleration at 0.2 second and s1 is spectral acceleration at 1 second time period right but pshe can not only give you the the these numbers for any hazard level or any return period pshe can also give you these spectral acceleration values for future earthquake at any time period not only at 0.2 second and 1 second which means that in principle from pshe you can also plot the response spectrum for future earthquake which is expected at your site because you already have the spectral acceleration values for all time periods expected at your site so you can you not only can have ss and s1 from pshe you can also get all intermediate points in between for all time periods which means pshe also give us the spectrum of our site when we perform it in it in full detail right this is called site specific has uh, spectrum right this is a spectrum which uh, pshe directly give you no need of the code equation right so the second option is that you go for the code equation so if your building is very important if your risk category is very high if your hazard values are very high if your soil is soil class f several provisions you will find in in building codes that go for the site specific response spectrum then you are not allowed to use that code equation code equation is for normal kinds of buildings right so for special cases Uh, code recommends a more accurate method of getting the same spectrum which is coming from the pshe right so i hope that whole story is now clear about the future earthquake